of rhythm. Today I will introduce you to the first lesson of class 6 book. The first lesson is from the pointing and the part is humor. So what is humor? Uh, let me explain humor. What is humor? Humor is a quality in something that makes you laugh and gives you message. Something which is witty and something which makes gives you laugh, but and if the story is very convenient and it's very funny, but it gives you a very deep message, a very serious message in a very funny tone. So it's called humor. The message is given in a very fun way, but it gives you a very strong message. So let's come to come to the topic. The, the first lesson is frogs in the fountain. So you can even guess and you can guess from the uh, name, the title of the lesson that what this lesson is going to be about. It's of course this is going to be about the frogs in the fountain. So what this lesson is going to be, this, is a, this lesson is going to be about the frogs and how it terrorizes the household. So let me tell you. The story, the author provides a delightful description of a simple incident involving his aunt. So, the author is described, he described a very, you know, in a, the, the whole event in a very delightful manner, in a very humorous manner. That what happened, what incident happened between him and his aunt. Let's come to the topic. Marigolds grow almost everywhere in our beautiful country. Marigold is a flower, it's the orange color flower. We use it in the ceremony, especially in here in the even in the India, the flower the marigold. We use it in the mandis and different kinds of ceremonies. So that kind of flower. That type of the flower. Marigold is called marigold. Grows almost, you can search it, you can google it as well. Grow almost everywhere in our beautiful country and they are constantly in demand at festivals, marriages, religious ceremonies, arrivals and departures and function of all kinds. As they are constantly, they are again and again used in all these festivals, marriages, religious ceremonies, arrivals and departures almost in every kind of occasion and function. So, if you happen to be a guest of honor at a public occasion, be prepared to be smothered. So, if you are happen to be, you know, the guest of honor, you are going somewhere, you are a guest, so, you know, be prepared to be covered all in many goats, garments. I am a little wary of these welcoming garlands because on one occasion a sleeping bee nestling nestling between the petals flew out and stung me <coughs> sorry under my chin it made for a very short speed. So and the author is saying that I am very little bit you know scary of uh, scared of all these you know the garlands the very good garlands because uh, because of his personal experience because once happened that the Someone you know, gave the very very good garlic to him, and the bee was hidden in those the very very gold petals, so it stung him on his chin. So when I told young Gohar about this incident, he said, "Is that how you got your double chin?" And now this is the humor part in it that he was stung by a uh, he was stung by a bee, but when he, his nephew when he told him about this incident, so he made a funny joke or a remark that that's how you got your double chin. Actually, the double chin came from my grandmother, grandmother who was, but. That was not the case. It wasn't the beast and it you know it goes after a few days. But actually he got his double chin from his grandmother, a large generously proportion lady with a number of chins. And so he got the double chin from his grandmother who you know was a very well proportioned and a very healthy person and she, and she got very, you know, not even double multiple chins as the author described it. Of course, to make it humorous, as this is the humorous, humorous part. So, Gohar and his sister Sa 
I like to play with my double chin and his nephew and niece likes to play with his double chin but I would never have dared touch my old granny on her chin or anywhere anywhere and now he's comparing the generation as well that when I was a very I was a kid and I was the Sara and Gohar uh, <coughs> age I would never dare dare to touch my aunt's chin <clears throat> Why? Because she was a very stern, reserved woman who believed that little boy should speak only when spoken to. Because she was a very strict and stern person and very reserved and she would always say that when when someone asks you then a person should, you know, respond, not, you know, not talk necessarily, not don't give, you know, opinion, a little boy, little um, kids. She was a very strict person in general. So she felt it reasonably well. She kept now the author is describing the the food content that how she was stirred and how in it, it gave us the uh, you know, character development and the character sketch of the uh, Aunt Mabel that how she was so we are seeing seeing you know we are creating this character sketch of Aunt Mabel through the author's lens. To the author lens. <coughs> she felt us reasonably well. She kept a uh, she kept a great Han Sama, but she did not believe in second helping. Second helping was the result that I have spent the rest of my life indulging in second helpings. Now she gave them food, you know, reasonably. She kept, you know, a great Hansama and they had a shark as well but she did not believe in second helping second helping means when you finish your food and then you ask for another plate of food so she did, does not believe in the second helpings and almost you know that had the child uh, in that memory now he is you know, doing the he almost indulge he is you know this how this happened that he now 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 he is old enough and now he is independent person independent person and he had the source of income so income so he indulged in the second helpings through his whole life now it become a habit as he did not have that privilege in the in his childhood so now he is having it now he is an independent person and he earns himself. So two mutton koftas were all that I was allowed with my plate of rice. I like kofta still do and it was painful for a small boy to have two to stop at two. Now that I'm a grown man with an independent source of income, I help myself to four. Who can stop me? Now they were allowed to have two koftas. But now now he earned himself so he eat two, four or whatever you know he wants to because who can stop him to stop him as he earned himself. Dr. Bill who dropped in to see me once a year remarked that I look overweight and I should cut down on my food. Now Dr. Bay who you know once a year see him he once remarked that he he is overweight and he should you know cut down his food intake and he should you know keep his diet balanced so he, he asked that what you have for lunch he asked of the curry and rice how much rice this two small helpings and how many kofta's only four you know what like, you know, only four like only four i had only four and two helping of rice and kofta kofta curry and rice don't have more than two he advised yes granny i said and now here comes you know the sarcastic when he was allowed to have two in his childhood and now this you know gives the reminder of that his childhood that he is remembering this that okay granny sarcastically he answered when Dr. Bay commented that you uh, have two kofas. So sarcastically he replied that okay granny I said and Dr. Bay gave Give him a puzzled look, and Dr. Bay was, you know, puzzled. That what he's saying. Am I, am I granny to him? 
Sorry, I said I thought you were my grandmother. Now he thinks I got Alzheimer. Alzheimer. Now he thinks he got Alzheimer. Alzheimer is a very uh, serious disease which prevents you from functioning, which prevents the brain from functioning normal, normally. So now the doctor thinks that he had the Alzheimer's. He thought, you know, he was talking and all Talking of many girls, Granny surrounded her house with them as she believed they kept snakes away. And so now we were talking about many girls. So now again, we, her granny, his granny uh, <coughs> surrounded his house, her house with the many girls as she believed that the strong uh, smell or the fragrance of the many girls you know, uh, kept away the snakes. Uh, keep the snakes away. Apparently, snakes do not like their pungent aroma, and they have a strong smell, and the snakes don't like it. And he also believed in this superstition. This superstition until he, I, until I was told by an expert on reptile that snakes do not have a strong sense of smell. So the aunt believed it, and he also believed the superstition that very good smell will keep away, will keep away the the snakes until he was told by expert that they don't have even this sense of smell. The snakes don't have a sense of smell. And other, you know, they are unaffected by, by any scent or any odor or smell. So, maybe so, but I don't recall ever seeing a snake in Granny's garden, although I did see them. Until now, he even got the confirmation of it that this is a superstition. But he's, he's still, he is giving this excuse or he is saying that even though this is a fact, but still, I've never seen a snake in my grandmother lawn or house as I would see them everywhere, the snakes. However, we did plenty of rocks thanks to the used fountain installed by my grandfather, but neglect, neglected after his death. Okay, now we are talking about the frogs. You know, the, we can also tell it from the title as well as frog in the fountain. Now we are talking about the frogs. So he did a plenty, we did have plenty of frogs thanks to this used fountain. They had in the house, in the lawn, they had this disused means they were not using it that fountain, fountain when his grandfather died. They neglected that fountain when the grandfather died. The fountain had in function for a couple of years with a little reservoir in which it stood had filled up with rainwater and was now covered with water lilies. Now the fountain was not functioning and even though it was neglected and it was not, it was covered with, it was covered with dirt and was filled with rain water and stagnant water and the lilies came on. It was it was covered with water lilies as well as water lilies we you know grows in the stagnant water. One day long after an expedition to the canal had work I brought some small fish in a bucket and introduced them to the lily lily pond. I I hadn't paid much attention to the dad was swimming around the bucket. So one day he, when he was when he, when he had the journey to the canal had work, he brought some small fish in the bucket and introduced them to the lily pond and he you know he bought the small fish in a bucket and he uh, put the, the, those fish in the fountain and that lily pond it had a stagnant water and uh, he didn't pay attention much, much attention to the tadpoles tadpoles you know the small small frogs uh, when it came from the small eggs the frogs eggs so it called this baby ba simply the babies of the frog it's called tadpoles so he, he didn't give any attention to the tadpoles swimming around in the bucket. So when the fish died as they were used to fresh swimming water and not stagnant water. So the, he introduced the fish, small fish to the fountain but as they died because they were used to the clear water, fresh water and but the tadpole did very well but what happened this happened that the tadpole they survived and before long we had 
frogs leaping all over the place. Very strong, the frogs multiply. Leaping means like they are purging, from, purging from that fountain. They were coming out in a very multiplied number of frogs. They were coming out from the fountain and all over the place. That means all over the house. They came into the veranda at night and keep us awake with their incessant singing and warbling. And they would come to the veranda and they would, you know, they would make that voice and they would keep them awake, the aunt and the author. I can't sleep when complained Aunt Mabel and now the, 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 uh, we constantly talked about the aunt, so the aunt name is aunt. Mabel and now the aunt Mabel complained that she could not sleep a wing that she could not sleep because of the sound of these frogs and she was very sensitive and allergic to the noise. They're surrounding you, I uh, I said. It was a long time since everyone had surrendered Aunt Mabel at Mr. Tom Spencer in her early 40s. Now he, he made a joke that these not these noises are annoy, not uh, annoying and they would you know uh, they are take take these noises as a lullaby if there was someone you know surrounding means sing, singing a song to someone's love so they you know if you know they hear about that this will make you sleep so uh, you know don't mind it take it as you know in a light light note they'll go away once the rain finished said granny hopefully but they did not go away one day screams came from the bathroom so she you know she was very hopeful that if, there, if it rains that maybe the frogs will go but they did not go and one day the scream came But screaming help came the Khansan and I ran to her and, and discovered that cause of her distress was a large ring around in this large swing, a large house swimming around the, in the pot. So So the, the screaming came from the bathroom and the aunt was terrorized by a frog and it, the frog was sitting in the pot. I pulled the chain and was loud rolling sound, a combination of frog and flesh and jumped the frog straight into Aunt Mabel's arm. She left for luck now that they seen that he would be that she would be safe in a zoo where she her cousin was superintendent and he you know, tried to help the Aunt Mabel but he scared the uh, frog and it jumped to the Aunt Mabel arms and it terrorized her that she decided that she was going to the luck knows where she would be safe over there. When well, Granny hired some neighbors to empty the lily pond and drowned up as many frogs as they could and the Granny decided to you know hired some laborers to that empty that pond and to take out those frogs from that fountain. And so they did not did the job very you know nicely and they, the frogs remained in that fountain. But there had been and he thought that they were exported to the China but did not. They were sent to the zoo, the Lucknow Zoo, the Lucknow Zoo as Lucknow Zoo in the bucket, in the bucket as a free gift. And the and the uh, basket were labeled the crates were labeled to Lucknow Zoo. Super attending staff and dispatch as a free gift and they were dispatched as a free gift to that uh, zoo. as this creature as the zoo is the best grade for uh, the best grade for teachers grade and small open or philosophical station master who had previously sent them a consignment of stray station dogs and this is this work was done by a superintendent superintendent of the railway station and he previously also sent his stray dog to that Lucknow, Lucknow Zoo as well. So this is the humorous part as well that the Aunt Mabel, she, she 
thought that I would be safe over there, but the frogs followed her and the frogs were um, dispatched to that zoo as well. So she's gonna be terrorized over there as well. So I hope you understood it and you enjoyed it. You find the humorous part in it. I hope you will read it and would get it. So I hope I've done my job honestly and you got it. Thank you so much.